I'm going to share with you Andy's story. If I can get through it without crying, I'll be lucky. I'll try. Um, <coughs> we had a little girl in our school. She was a preschool student. Her name was Andy. Now, her mother had transported drugs across the state. So she was sent to prison for eight years. Now, in Texas, we're hard on our women and children. So in eight years, Andy lost her mother. Now, her dad had another wife, woman, and, and she hated Andy from the get-go. So she would set Andy up so that when the dad came home in the evenings, he would beat her. And it was all a setup. So anyway, you can imagine, this little kid was full of rage. And so in her classroom, something would happen and she would have a meltdown. And so she would just go into a rage. And the teacher would bring her down to the office to meet. And she'd come carrying her over her arm like this. And she'd be kicking and screaming and scratching and pinching and snotting and crying and yelling and just carrying on. So she would give her to me and I would take her in a basket hold. I would take her into the lounge. Don't you know the teachers love that? <laughs> I'd take her into the lounge because they had a full length mirror in there. And we'd sit down in front of the mirror and I'd say, Andy, 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 look in that mirror. You throw the most magnificent fits of any child I have ever known, but you're the only one who doesn't get to see them. So we're gonna sit here and watch them. Well, if you know those kind of kids, that goes on about two hours. And then they just wear themselves out. And she'd fall back into my arm. If you've ever been kicked, bit, scratched, snotted on, called every kind of imaginary name you could imagine, then you know that when you have a student like that, you bond with them. I love that kid. I honestly loved her. So every year I would go to a teacher and I'd say, would you take Andy? What did they say? <laughs> but anyway, they'd say, okay. And they would take her for a year. Well, when she was going to be in second grade, I asked this teacher to take her and she said she would. Well, about three days before school started the next year, that teacher's husband was transferred to another state and she went with him. <laughs> now, I no longer have a teacher for Andy. But I walked in, I, I, well, I interviewed this teacher over the phone because it was so late. It was the only teacher I ever interviewed over the phone. I don't know how she knew what I was looking for, but she answered my questions as if I'd written them out for her and she was reading them. They were perfect. Well, I hired her and when she came, that was the worst, hatefulest young woman I think I've ever met in my life. She hated Andy from the get-go. She took masking tape and made a cell for her over in the corner of the room. Now, this was not a learning square, where as her behavior got better, she, she was able to get bigger and bigger until finally she was in the classroom. This was a cell, and she was to stay there the whole year. Well, at the end of the year, Andy had lost everything that those teachers before had invested in her. So now she's in third grade, and I go to a young teacher, her name is Gail Belknap. I walk in her room and she says, Sue now, I hope you're here to ask me to take Andy. Oh, is that not a teacher to die for? So anyway, she took Andy and she plugged these strategies into her curriculum. And I know she did because she would send Andy down to the office to show me her work. And it would be very obvious, you know, and that gave me a chance to, you know, give her some affirmation. Well, <clears throat> Andy stayed in our school and when she was in fifth grade, we had D.A.R.E., if you all had D.A.R.E., 
and you know you have to write an essay. So she wrote an essay on um, losing her mother to drugs and she won for the state of Texas and got to go to Disneyland and a whole bunch of other things. And then she honestly went ahead and graduated from high school with honors. And guess what? Miss Belknap stayed with her every step of the way. Now she didn't see her every day or every week or every, but every once in a while she would touch base with her. And she just mentored her all the way through that. You know, when I die, if I get one little star, I'm, I'm going to give it to Miss Belknap. Because that is about the most wonderful thing I could ever think of. Now, let me show you one of the strategies that she used in her, on the state assessment. Now, at this time, our tests were not timed. Andy, now she's a third grader, she's eight years old. She stayed until 7.30 at night to finish this test. Why would a baby do that? Nobody asked her to, nobody even told her she could. Why would she want to? She loved Miss Belknap and she wanted everything to be perfect for her. Miss Belknap was the only thing that little girl had going for her.